Uh, well, yeah, I'll start by, um, you know, send along my best wishes to, to everyone and their families. Um, you know, remain safe and healthy. Also, um, you know, on behalf of the team, just want to recognize and express my appreciation, our appreciation and admiration for all the people whose jobs are to, to treat people and keep our lives going every day. It's um, obviously very challenging, and, and uh, we'll keep following the guidelines, but we just want to, you know, give a special thanks and shout out to, to those that are, that are keeping us going and taking care of us, um, you know, the medical professionals that are, that are doing such a great job. And um, look forward to getting to the other side of this, but you know, in the meantime, just really put things in perspective for, for all of us and uh, I appreciate the hard work that everybody's doing to keep us safe and keep our daily lives going. Um, you know, at the start of free agency, I made a statement about Tom. Um, it would be, of course, impossible to sum up everything Tom did in 20 years into, into a comment. Um, then or now, uh, but I meant everything I said about him, and uh, I'm sure we'll be talking about him for years and, and decades to come. Um, yeah. Right now, we're, we're moving forward and uh, focus on the draft here for this call, and that's really where our attention's been and will continue to be is to put the best in 2020 do all we can between now and, and the start of the season our preparations to have our team in the best position to compete uh, in 2020 uh, in terms of the draft uh, you know, it's a little bit different logistically uh, over the last month from um, where we've been in the past uh, but as usual Nick Casario and his staff have done a great job of um, Put things in order, assembling information, um, you know, following up on on all the many things that we have to try to look at. And um, you know, it's not normal, but uh, I think we've had again we've, we've accumulated a lot of information. We've had a lot of opportunities to talk about um, all the players and all the other things that are involved here and in this process and, and there'll be more as we go forward um, uh, between our you know ourselves and the league and with other teams and so forth so still have some work to do in that area in terms of just seeing exactly you know how everything's going to function like we talk about it and have an idea but we'll actually I'd put it put it into place um, you know early next week and, and just see exactly how it's going to go but I'm sure that it's all well thought out and organized uh, from a league standpoint, and you know we'll just do our part when we're when we're involved in the process. So um, that's that's really about where we are here. Um, and there's there's some things going forward that haven't been detailed out yet in terms of logistics and specific communications. And, um, so forth, but I think the general idea is to handle this, um, you know, the way it's, it's been handled in the past, we just can't be together, so we'll communicate in other ways to um, be able to exchange ideas and opinions and thoughts and, and make decisions. So, yeah, that's where we are now. Thank you, Coach. We'll, we'll open up for questions. We'll start with Mike Lee, followed by Mike Petrack. Thanks, DC. I feel like hope all is well for you and your family. Um, what, what stands yeah, out? Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Uh, Bill, what, what stands out to you about this year's quarterback class in the draft? Uh, well, I think it's similar to most years. Uh, there's a quite a, a range of um, players and, and uh, some of the systems that they're uh, that they play in in college are, are different either than what we run or what traditional NFL systems uh, would look like 
and some are more closely uh, schematically uh, to that. So, you know, each guy has his own set of skills, uh, he has his own circumstances, and uh, some players have, you know, played well over a sustained period of time. Some players have um, had an exceptional year in the past year or two. Uh, maybe 2019, in some cases 2018, uh, and then for whatever the reasons were, the, the two years didn't quite match up. Uh, so, but that's you know I'd say about the way it, it always is. Um, you know there are always a variety of things you have to try to put together and, and look at, but certainly there's a lot of interesting players and um, guys that have really good arms can really throw the ball very athletic players and players that have won a lot of games and you know have shown their uh, competitiveness and instinctiveness so it's good interesting group and uh, probably one that has decent depth to it thank you uh, next question Mike yep. Chair here followed by Mike Chiarity thank you Stacy uh, good afternoon Bill trust you're staying safe Mike. Yeah, likewise, you too. Um, yes, thank you. Um, obviously, getting to know prospects has always been a big part of player evaluation with you and Nick and, and the whole organization. I'm curious um, how much you have used technology, whether it's Zoom or Skype or conference teleconferencing, to get to know these players, and how much um, can you simply – how much do you have to sacrifice in terms of trying to get to know a player knowing it's not going to be the same – as going to a pro day or meeting them face to face. Yeah, right. Yeah, like that's an interesting question, and uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit different than than the way we've done it in the past with the thirty visits and the pro days and so forth. But uh, all the teams are working with the same, um, you know, constraints, and uh, so I think we've probably talked to as many, if not more. Uh, players than we have in the past. You know, when you're not traveling, you're just sitting at a desk and or sitting in a room wherever we are. Um, you know, it's, it's easier to make a lot of phone calls and get in hot contact with people rather than sometimes visit a place and you know just see the people that are there. Even though those visits are valuable and you're able to you know get into more of an in-depth conversation um, and evaluation there. So um, yeah, we certainly put a lot of logged a lot of. Uh, phone time and uh, FaceTime and whatever, you know, video conferencing and so forth. Um, and, you know, again, I think for the most part, we, we all adjusted to that and, um, you know, tried to take advantage of the opportunity that, that we have to do those things. Uh, so. And is part of that opportunity, Bill, watching more film or would you have watched the same amount of film the part for being closed in. I think we've probably seen a little more. I mean, you know, we started a little bit earlier this year, unfortunately. So, um, you know, we're way further ahead. Um, you know, in January, in terms of evaluating draft and free agent players uh, for this year, but yeah, maybe a little bit more. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Uh, next question, uh, Mike Giardi. Hang on one second. Uh, followed by Dan Roach. Go ahead, Mike. Bill, I'm glad to hear that you guys are doing well. Um, this being our first time talking to you since the end of the season, and in particular since Tom left, I know you wanted to leave us the statement, but I'm just curious if you guys had a desire to bring Tom back the coming season. Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, a lot of water under the bridge, Mike. And like I said, we're really focused on this season and trying to look at our opportunities and make decisions and plan and prepare to you know, be as competitive as we can be this year. So that's really what our focus is on. It didn't, didn't surprise you at all, him leaving? Okay, I think we've covered all that. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. Next question, Dan Roach, followed by Alan Siegel. Hey, 
Hey, Bill, hope you're doing well. Uh, hey, Danny, how are you? Good. Good, thank you. Uh, just a, a thought on, uh, in your special with, with Nick Saban, you mentioned, or he mentioned, uh, that a lot of coaches don't actually call the head coach to talk to them prior to a draft about certain players. How important is that to you? And do you, you talk to even position coaches as well? And is it the same this year, or have you done it maybe a little bit more because of the lack of being uh, able to get hands-on with some of these prospects? Uh, yeah, uh, Dan, I think it's um, – yeah, yeah, I think it's always a part of it. I think a lot of that probably depends on your relationship with the coach you're calling and how well you know each other and so forth. So, you know, somebody like Nick, that we've known each other for, I don't know, call it 40 years. Um, you know, that's a lot different than calling somebody that you've never met before. And, and um, you know, they may have some insight into the player and all that, but, you know, you just don't know each other as well. And there's, I'm not saying an intentional, it could be a very unintentional gap, but, you know, what they're looking for, what you're looking for is sometimes not always the same thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, the relationships that all of us have with people over an extended period of time where you have a lot of history of, you know, in our case, you know, players and their situations and their skills and, you know, can compare them relative to other guys that we know and so forth. Um, you know, I think there's just a natural level of comfort there. And certainly there is with myself um, towards Nick. Nobody I have more respect for, but I also have a great personal relationship with Nick, and I value his opinion uh, very, very highly. And, and would you say, Bill, that because of the, the, the what's had to happen, you mentioned FaceTime, other things, have you mastered the technique of all this technology that you may be not bothered with over the last 30, 40 years? Uh, I'd say mastered is probably not the right word, Dan, but... Um, Certainly better at it than I was four weeks ago, and I don't know what half this was, but at least now I can um, I can do more than I did, put it that way. So get a little better every day, learn, learn a new button or learn a new thing to click on and see what um, trick that does. Um, so, yeah, it's been, um, been very, very educational. And I was certainly starting at the, at the first floor, maybe even in the basement below the first floor. So uh, it's, been, it's been interesting to um, get educated on some technology. Uh, you know, Dan Mosey's done a, a tremendous job for us because we've had to, you know, navigate a lot of this. I mean, the, there's the coaching side of it. There's the scouting side of it. There's the, um, <clears throat> you know, playbook and preparing for the offseason program uh, side of it, meetings, and so forth, um, and just to be able to, to deal with so many people that are, some are very proficient uh, at some of the things we're doing, others like myself are, you know, remedial, and, uh, and so putting things together on a lot of different levels for multiple groups and interactions that, uh, you know, cross over different connections and needs and can we do this with this type of meeting and this kind of conversation and can we do something else you know some are one on one some are it's five people ten people twenty people um, and we're preparing for larger groups than that so there really are a lot of a lot of moving parts and uh, Dan's done a tremendous job for us and and trying to pull uh, you know a lot of things together and like I said remotely help out people like me that need a lot of help. Next question. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Followed by Bob. Bill, glad to hear that uh, you and the family are well. Um, you, you've always talked about... Thanks. You've always talked about value. I'm just wondering if there are some years where your teams need where you're drafting and the players that are available affect the metrics that you use to determine value. And I wonder if this year is maybe one of them Considering that you pick a 23 and then again don't pick until 87. Yeah, that's good. Um, 
Yeah, that's a real good question. Um, Alan, that's something we'll have to you know, take a closer look at, I think, uh, up until, uh, I'd say about, you know, now and maybe in a couple of days. You know, most of our focus has been trying to you know, learn as much as we can about the players, have them uh, evaluated and, and valued properly and so forth. I think as you get into the final, uh, you know, week or three or four days prior to the draft and draft strategy and uh, things like that uh, start to start to become a little bit more uh, in focus, come into focus just because you know more of what you're doing. You have a better idea of what, what your you know, what the options are and where you'd be comfortable doing certain things and I think other teams are falling in with the same category as, as we are, that they're starting to, you know, figure out what, you know, whatever their situation is. And so, um, you know, we, we have a lot of, we have a draft, a lot of, a lot of draft picks, and, you know, some of them are, are kind of more in a certain area. And as you said, we have a, you know, a little bit of void there in the second round. Um, although, you know that that player Sanu, you know, filled a filled a need for us. So, um, you know, that's okay. But in terms of just the draft planning and strategy and so forth, yeah, that'll really things start to pick up here in the next, you know, probably I don't know around the weekend or maybe after the weekend in the two or three days leading up to the draft. Great, thanks, Bob. Yeah, you're welcome. You too, Alan. Uh, next question, Bob Sosi, followed by Phil Perry. All right, thank you, Stacy. Hi, Bill. I'm glad to hear you're doing well. Hey, Bob, you too. Uh, Bill, I know you can control only what you can control, and uh, you're dealing with things as they develop. Uh, I'm curious how the circumstances of this offseason, with no conditioning, the facilities closed, your current players on your roster not being present under supervision with your staff, so to speak, well, that kind of complicates your evaluation of where the players you know are coming back are, and also with some of the uncertainty surrounding what you know lies on the horizon beyond the draft, OTAs, minicamp at this point. If that factors in whatsoever in your draft strategy, particularly when it comes to developing young players. Yeah, well, that... Um yeah, Bob, it's really a good question, and it's something that we've, we've talked about, and really the answer for us is to how to try to maximize the opportunity that we have. Um, if, you take, if you compare this year to the lockout year, um, you know, everybody had a lot of facilities available, and they could work out wherever they wanted. Um, it, that's limited, more limited this time, but we weren't allowed to have any contact with the players. We couldn't talk to the veteran players. We couldn't talk to the rookie players. And, in fact, we couldn't even sign the players that weren't drafted until right before training camp. So the opportunity to even communicate and teach was was very, very limited then. Um, now, let's say we're looking at a situation that um, the opportunity to train for some players may be more limited, um, but our opportunity to communicate with them is, and teach them, even though it's remote, um, is infinitely better than what it was um, during the lockout. So we'll just have to kind of see how all that plays out. But I, I do think that from a teaching standpoint, we can we can get a lot of teaching done uh, that we, we weren't able to do, uh, you know, nine, ten years ago in a similar, in a similar but different situation. So... I think the teaching part of it will hopefully be okay. I think the you know fundamental part of it, the execution part of it, uh, the timing and so forth, is going to be probably similar to what it was uh, in the lockout in 2011 when it, you know you're just dealing with training camp and you have to really accelerate the the teaching and the or the I would say the execution and the you know teamwork and so forth. Uh, you just don't have that that good base to fall back on that we've been used to in the spring. At least it doesn't appear that way now. Maybe that'll change. Maybe maybe you know we will be able to work with the players this spring.
morning. We'll have to see how all that goes. But um, even if we don't, relative to the 2011 season, um, we're, I think we'll have a better opportunity to teach. And so that's what we're focused on in the spring is to get as much teaching done as we can. And then um, we'll see what, what kind of opportunities we have with, you know, to actually, you know, work on the field. Appreciate it, Bill. Take care. Stay safe. Okay. Thank you, too, Alan. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, I'm, we're already at the 20-minute mark here. I'm going to take three final questions, and I apologize to all those who have their hands raised that I'm not going to be able to get to. So we're going to go Phil Perry, Ben Bowen, Tom Curran. Go ahead, Phil. Thanks, Daisy. Bill, glad to hear things. Well, your place. Um, just wanted yeah, to ask you. Thank you. Well you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm curious, you mentioned, you know, it's a pretty interesting quarterback class. And obviously, there's only one Brady. But I'm curious, how willing do you feel like you and your staff will need to be moving forward um, when it comes to that position and maybe altering your offense a little bit? It, it does feel like they're more athletes sort of coming into the league year after year, different styles of quarterback. And I'm just curious how important you think that is to – to be open to, to changing the thing that you've built for two decades with, you know, one guy primarily playing the majority of the snap there. Right, yeah, well, as you say, exactly, Phil, just um, I couldn't agree with you more in terms of over the last two decades, everything we did, every single decision we made um, in terms of major planning was, you know, made with the idea of how to make things best for Tom Brady and now that being said you know we've had several situations where uh, we had to uh, play and we knew Tom wasn't going to be the quarterback so that would go back to Castle and uh, Jimmy and Jacoby and you know situations like that and so in those situations uh, they were uh, in season although Matt Castle situation ended up being for 15 games but uh, but whatever those situations were, uh, we adapted what we had to uh, the player and tried to, uh, once we had to cast, cast would be a good example, you know, we geared everything towards um, you know, doing what was best for him, just like we always geared everything for doing what was best for Tom and uh, to help our offense there. So I don't, I don't really see that changing. Whoever, whoever the quarterback is will uh, try to make it a uh, – make things work smoothly and efficiently for that player and take advantage of his strength and his skills. And you know, each, each of us has different skills. Each quarterback has a different skill set. And, um, whatever things that particular player, you know, does well, we'll try to work for it and feature and, or at least give an opportunity to do those. And the things that, uh, either, doesn't do well or needs more experience out or whatever the case might be, then we'll try to you know, minimize or until those those improve, you know, work around them. So I, I don't see it being any different from what it what it uh, the process and what it's ever been. Uh, it's just, you know, we know the situation we're in now different than the uh, you know, than the year, you know, when, when we had to plan to play four games without Tom start of the season, but he would be back after that. Uh, this is, you know, a little bit different than that, but it's uh, along the same lines as we we get whoever is the quarterback ready, ready. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, you're welcome, Bill. Uh, last two questions. We'll go Ben Volan and Tom Curran. Go ahead, Ben. Uh, hey, Bill. Uh, glad you're doing okay. Thanks for doing this today. Yeah, you uh, that. Thanks a well on your run. Yep, hanging in there. Um, similar question from what Bill had. Uh, this will be the first time in nearly 20 years that you do have a new quarterback. Does that change how you scout other positions in the draft or free agency? Does it change what you're looking for in certain players? Uh, yeah, I mean, not really. Uh, again, I think we want to, you know, we know things we need to do to, to have a good team and and uh, we have to be able to protect the quarterback. We have to be able to run the ball. We have to be able to, you know, get open and catch the ball with whoever the receivers or tight ends or running backs are. We have to be able to play defense against all the teams we have to 
play again. So, um, you know, I think those specifics will really come into play more as we, you know, get on the field in training camp and start game planning and, you know, being, being more specific. Uh, again, I think the, the spring is always the time uh, for the players to learn the offense, to work on their fundamentals, their basic techniques, and, and the refinement all comes at a little later later point in time. So um, if we don't have an opportunity to do that this spring, then uh, you know, there's nothing we can do about that. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with it in, in training camp. But, I mean, before we can you know, start getting too, too fine-tuned and too specific, I mean, we all need to, to understand the basics, the fundamentals, the basic communication, uh, the fundamentals of our, our technique, the fundamentals of the running game, the passing game, so forth, and and then we'll we'll tailor those based on to an individual player, whatever position it is, whether it's a receiver or you know a, a quarterback or, or whatever it is. It's, you know, Randy Moss and Wes Welker might run the same route, but it's not the same route. So you know that 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 comes later. I don't think you start at that point. That's that's something after you get the basics down that you you know modify for an individual player skills. Uh, and a quick follow-up, if I may, uh, Jared Stidham, uh, what was your impression of him uh, during his rookie season? And do you feel like you have a good grasp on him as a player, even though he's only thrown four passes in a regular season game? Yeah, well, we spent, you know, multiple, uh, you know, quite a bit of time with uh, both Brian and uh, Stid and um you know, I think we have a pretty good, you know, Josh and myself certainly have a pretty good feel for both those players. Um, circumstances will be different this year, and and uh, you know we'll see how everything plays out. But again, to start with, I think the main thing is to you know, give everyone a chance to to compete, to you know, get get people comfortable with the position and the skills that they're playing, the communication that's involved. We'll evaluate the players as we get an opportunity to evaluate them. So right now the spring is about, it'll be about teaching uh, the best that we can. And at whatever point we get a chance to get on the field and participate and play, then that's what, that's what we'll do. But I'm not sure exactly how that's going to go. Once we figure it out, then we'll, we'll work from there. Okay, last Thanks a lot, Tom. Thanks for the time. Yeah, well, last yeah. question is Tom Curran. Hey, Bill, thank you very much for taking all this time. Last question is, I know how much self-scouting you guys do in the regular season and on your entire operation. When doing that relative to the draft the last few years, have you seen anything that you're doing that you could do differently to have different results, maybe especially in the second round where you've frequently gone defensive back and it just hasn't panned out that well? So I'm just wondering, is that bad luck? Is it? Anything related to when you're taking guys? Anything that you can give in terms of enlightening us on that? Thank you. Yeah, well, we evaluate everything we do, and and uh, are always trying to you know learn from every situation to improve, and we do that. We've done that every year since I've been here. We'll continue to do it, and uh, we'll do the best we can this year. So we'll see how it goes. Is there anything on that group that's a position you guys have gone back to with Cyrus and Jordan Richards and, and Duke Dawson and last year Juwan? Is there any philosophy in the second round that you have that, that says, hey, let's go and try and get some matchup type of corners or a corner or a safety or defensive back who brings something at that point? Yeah. Well, then you got guys like Matt Light, Jamie Collins, and Rob Gronkowski, and you know, mm-hmm. there's Plenty of second rounders that you know have a good career here. So we'll see how, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, but you know, look, each draft is different. Every year is different. Each player is different. So you know, I think to sit here and you know rehash the 2015 draft or the 2006 draft or whatever it is is again, they're you know they're they're fundamentals of the process, and you know we always try to improve those. We'll try to do 
do the best job that we can this year in every round, first round, second round. If we're in the second round right now, we're not even in, in the second round. But, you know, whatever rounds, whatever picks we have, try to maximize the value of our team the best that we can. Hey, take care. Okay, thanks, Tom. Thank you, Coach. Thanks for the extra time there. Thanks, everyone, for calling in.